There is a new version of WSJTX called WSJTX Improved, and I'm going to show you all about it this time on Ham Radio Tube. So real quick, if you're brand new to WSJTX, this is not a tutorial of how to use WSJTX. This is showing the new features of the new version of this software. If you want to get started with FT8 and WSJTX, I suggest you watch this video right here and come on back and watch this one. So I don't know when this was actually released. Uh, I just heard about it last night while watching Greg K6EGG's live stream and he was using it. And we were all in the chat kind of wondering, what the heck are you doing? So with a little Google searching, I found it, and it's pretty darn cool. So if we hop over to the Google machine and search WSJTX 2.7.1, we see this WSJTX improved. And if we click on that, it takes us to this website here. And we can see we've got Mac OS, Raspberry Pi, Linux, Windows, all that stuff. So click on whichever uh, operating system you have and go ahead and install it. And when you do, I found that everything just transfers over from my original WSJTX. I was on 2.6.1. So I've got both here. This is the original WSJTX. This is the improved version. So let's open this guy up. So right off the bat, we can see that this is very much the same as WSJTX, but also kind of different. This interface looks a little bit different, but starting up here at the top in our menu, we've got this new tab here called filters. And what this is, this allows you to basically filter out any continents or territories that you don't want to see basically. So for example, if I only want to hunt or chase DX stations, I could check this hide stations from North America. Now you see that's checked. And in the band activity window, when this is sorting and, and listening to everything that's going on uh, in the band, it's going to completely ignore any North American stations, allowing me to only search for DX. Now, if we want to quickly turn that off and just kind of open it wide up again, this new button here, this BP, this allows us to bypass the filters that we just set. So we can click that and that will allow those North American stations through again. So you don't have to go through here and uncheck everything you have. You can just check that and open it wide open. So that's pretty cool. Another thing up here in the menu, if we go under view, we have two new functions here. This one, band buttons. This coincides with these band buttons here. So if we want to quickly cycle between whatever bands we're using, let me turn the uh, radio on there on the screen. So you can see as I'm cycling through these bands, my radio is changing as opposed to having to go through here and pick which band. So that makes it really useful, but maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want to get that out of the way so you can go to the view, hit the band buttons, and there they are. They're gone. So that's pretty cool. Another thing under the view, which I know will certainly make at least one of my viewers extremely happy, use dark style. If you want to use dark mode for some weird reason, Check that. There you go. Dark mode on WSJTX. If you want to make it look like an old uh, CRT monitor, like you're playing Oregon Trail, there's your dark mode, just like that. And earlier I mentioned how seamless this was. Uh, Grid Tracker still works with this. I did absolutely zero configuration other than downloading this new WSJTX improved and installing it, and everything works as it should. So there's Grid Tracker working with WSJTX Improved for all you Grid Tracker users. Taking a look at the main window of WSJTX Improved, let me embiggen this a little bit. A couple new features. We have this ignore button here. So as you can see, put call sign in the ignore list. So maybe somebody's on the naughty list. Uh, you just want to ignore them for some reason. You can put a call sign there. Uh, another cool thing when you're working somebody, so I worked this IZ0 station earlier, if we hover over the lookup, you can say it says search for call sign in database. When I click that, it doesn't do anything. So I'm not really sure what that does. But if I right click it, it opens up a browser and goes right to their QRZ page. Look at that station, good Lord, that's awesome. So that's pretty cool. This add button here, if we right click it, it should open a browser and go to their HamQTH page. So that's pretty cool. So you get a bit more functionality with that. 
Taking a look at our waterfall, this is one of the coolest things. Notice these vertical lines as I move my mouse over the waterfall. So you can use this to really zero in on a station if you want to receive, say I wanna receive here. I just left click, that green box just went over there. So that's not really anything new from original WSJTX, but the ability to have these vertical lines and, and kind of zero in exactly where they are or to find a clear frequency is pretty sweet. But the other thing, so here's a clear frequency. I'm gonna left click that, that set my receive. I'm just gonna right click it. Notice the transmit also went there. So I can just left click, right click and set my transmit and receive frequency on the same frequency. Whereas in the original WSJTX, we would have to uh, basically right click here and then a window would pop up that would say set transmit and receive so we'd have to do that this we just left click right click done left click right click left click right click how cool is that that's pretty awesome taking a look under settings or preferences on mac we see we have kind of the same layout here but under the general tab we have more options we have this whole extra window here of additional features that you can look through and kind of customize it and tweak it to your liking. There's also some more uh, options under behavior. Under the radio tab, there's something really cool. Uh, notice this all looks the same, but down here we have rig data. So we can read and display our power and SWR in the WSJTX window, and we can halt transmitting when the SWR is greater than 2.5. So let me show you what that looks like. I am on uh, 20 meters here, so I do not have the tuner on. Let me just hit the tune button. And we'll notice here, we see the power. Down here, we see the SWR of our radio. How cool is that? But now maybe we're going really hard out with FT8 and we got an NFED and maybe we've saturated our toroid and our SWR gets high. So let me just switch over to 160 meters where my antenna isn't resonant. And let's just hit the tune button and see what happens. Look at that. The transmission just stopped because it knows that my SWR is too high on this uh, band because my antenna isn't resonant here. That is built-in protection with WSJTX improved. That is freaking awesome. Now let's go back to settings here. We'll walk you through here. Our audio tab, little bit of extra stuff here. We can sort our sound cards alphabetically. So here you can see those are all the sound cards I have. If I sort them alphabetically, now they're alphabetical. So that's kind of neat. That's a nice little feature to have. TX macros looks pretty much the same as does reporting. Uh, the frequencies tab, this is a neat thing that is not in WSJTX. While we can add frequencies to WSJTX, we can do something different with this. So let me just right click on here and insert. Uh, let's just put uh, 14.300 just to pick on those guys and hit OK. Now, if I check this preferred button right here, what that does, we can see now I have this asterisk 14300 20 meters, right? So we can go there. But if we have a frequency that maybe we're maybe we're hunting uh, like a de-expedition or something that's using a different frequency than we would normally use in WSJTX with these new buttons up here, because I checked that preferred button, when I go to 20, it knows that I prefer 14300 as opposed to 14074 as per the norm. If we want to uncheck that, we can uh, basically go right back to where we were normally. And there is 14074 again. And uh, we can see it there, but it doesn't have the asterisk because that's not the preferred. And if we want to just get rid of it, it should be under all, there we are. We can just delete it, hit okay. And now 14300 is gone from there and it goes right back to 14074. We also have the colors looks uh, exactly the same as the original WSJTX. But then we have these three new tabs. We have advanced for any kind of advanced settings. So you've got high DPI scaling if you have a high resolution monitor. I'm just on a 1080p monitor, so it doesn't really matter for me, but I'd be curious to see what that looks like on a high res monitor. This next tab is really cool. This is alerts. So Basically, make sure you heed this warning and make sure your radio is set up properly. So 
you're not routing your computer audio to your radio. So by that, I mean, like on an ICOM, if you go to menu, settings, connectors, mod input, and then your data mod, make sure that's only USB. You do not want mic and USB. You want USB only because what would happen is any sound that your computer is playing would actually route through your radio, which is sometimes why when you're listening to WS uh, or FT8, you might hear like computer sounds being transmitted. That's because someone doesn't have their radio and their audio settings set up properly. So the audio coming from their computer is actually being transmitted out on WSJTX. So make sure you have your audio settings set up properly. But by default, these were all unchecked. I just checked them all to see what would happen. And you click this enable audio alerts. And what that does is when you have a new station or a new grid or a new whatever, it'll just give you an audible alert like DX or new continent something like that so let me make a let me make a contact really quick and we'll see if we can uh, show you that dx there you go see that it just said dx dx apparently it's pretty persistent <laughs> so it says it like every time so I, I don't know how useful that might be but it's there it's a thing but notice this pop-up window if we have this set on uh, looks like we get a little bit more information we can fill in here. So just more stuff to play with. That's pretty cool. And then lastly, under settings, we have this filters tab. So this filters for the band activity window. And, and basically, you can search uh, or filter territories one through four for the hide checkboxes in the view menu. You can blacklist people. You can whitelist people. You can always allow people to pass. Apply filters only to the call signs of the calling stations. Use filters for weight and pounds, CQ first, etc. I don't know what a lot of this means, but it's more stuff to play with in WSJTX improved. So there we have it, guys. Just a quick run through of all the new features in the WSJTX improved. Apparently, it's at least a year and a half old, uh, but I'm just finding out about it today and hopefully... Uh, I could teach you guys something new. I think this is really cool. It adds a lot more functionality to it. And uh, really, the seeing the SWR and the power there and the ability to stop transmitting if your SWR is too high, I think are some of the three key features that uh, I really like out of this. But uh, let me know uh, what you guys think in the comments. I'll leave a link to where to download this in the description. And until next time, my name is Mike K. Thanks so much for watching Ham Radio 2. We'll see you next time. 73.